Hey everybody, this is Irma Brody. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is Sunday, September 27th. Um, as you know, I've done a lot of interviews in the last few months on Zoom. Uh, but today is a very special interview because it's not entertainment related whatsoever, but I've known Matt Magania for quite some time. He is the uh, he is a board member of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, Great Los Angeles Central Coast Chapter. Um, and if you didn't know, September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. We've done a lot of events with, with Matthew and AFSP in the past, and uh, we want to bring it online to our digital and virtual audience. So welcome, Matthew. How are you doing today? Doing great. It's great to see you, Armand. Thank you so much for having us. Of course, it's been a long time since I've seen you in person um, with COVID and everything. I'm not in Los Angeles right now. I'm with family on the East Coast. So I've been no here for problem. seven months, yeah. Um, but like I said, I wanted to get in touch with you because it is nearing the end of September and September is uh, Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Uh, you have the Out of Darkness uh, Walk coming up and uh, you have a, uh, people can donate to that campaign right now. Um, but before we dive into that, uh, for those who are not aware of the organization, please uh, give us a brief overview of AFSP LA. Um, like I said, before we recorded, a lot of people going through uh, different things this, uh, uh, this season and you know, people uh, endure different things. So um, I would like to inspire them, get them to know what uh, resources AFSP offers. They might have a friend who's going through something and maybe the, they themselves are going through something uh, in which they need to do some outreach to, um, you know, suicide prevention awareness uh, efforts. So please tell us about AFSP. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks so much, you know, for you taking the initiative, originally reaching out to us um, and wanting to do a third party event. Um, because with, you know, the people you know, the people you work with, um, I think what we do really connects with a lot of them. And it's just so important in general, you know, I don't think, I think if you don't go through anything yourself, you know somebody, or you may not know that you know somebody, but you, you probably do that's been affected in some way by mental illness, depression, um, anxiety, all those. So thank you for reaching out originally. Um, so we're the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. We're the leading um, suicide prevention um, organization in the United States. Uh, we have chapters in all 50 states. So, you know, for your folks that are out in Virginia or the East Coast, they can um, look up on AFSP.org for their local chapters if they wanted to get involved or just local resources and things like that. Um, so, yeah, out here in L.A., we're the Los Angeles and Central Coast chapters. So we go all the way from Los Angeles County um, all the way up to San Luis Obispo County. So we cover a big area. And essentially, um, you know, our goal with AFSP is to save lives and bring hope to those affected by suicide. And um, we basically do that through um, scientific research, um, survivor support, um, advocacy on the state and federal levels, um, and educational programs. And so those are the four main ways that we try to um, integrate suicide prevention into the communities. And um, yeah. And uh, you just backtrack a little bit. Uh, I met you folks in 2018, I believe, two years ago. Um, and for those who know me, uh, I work in entertainment. I'm a writer. Um, I'm trying to be a working writer in entertainment, um, but also do a lot of entertainment events. So we do like a lot of mixtures and, and uh, Q and A events with the in, in, people in the entertainment industry. Um, so when I first reached out to you, it was kind of this thing where it's like, okay, well, I'm just some guy, but I want to be able to attach a platform and, and do something for you folks. And uh, you know, through ticket sales, we contribute as, as much as we can to the organization. What I didn't realize was after these events, how many people would come up to me and say, hey, this was life changing um, because you mentioned earlier how people in the entertainment world, uh, which is my demo, uh, they go through a lot of things and, you know, pe people like me, I'm always happy. I'm like, whatever. But then like people literally DM me saying, Hey, because of this event, you literally saved my life. Like a friend of mine who I've known for, for years, uh, last year, it was so random. She goes, Hey, that suicide prevention event you did, um, a few months ago, literally stopped me from doing something that I really regret. And I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm just some guy trying to do events. But bringing, uh, I guess, this organization to uh, the forefront in terms of my platform, it really changed people. So I was just very fortunate that you guys respond to what we do uh, because the entertainment industry does have a lot of people enduring uh, uh, seasons of sadness because it is an industry of rejection of, of, you know, 
uh, I almost say failed dreams, but yeah, for lack of better terms, a lot of dreams don't happen in this world, uh, in this world of entertainment. So um, I, I do appreciate you guys doing that with us and the fact that you are, you do have a chapter in LA. So what kind of response do you get in, in the LA chapter? Um, is it a variety of people who, come, who reach out to you folks? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, it's interesting. One, the first event that I attended of yours, you actually weren't there. You were on the East Coast, but it was in Hollywood. It was on a Saturday morning. It was great. I think it was Priscilla, Yasmin, yeah. and Jessica that were the hostesses. And um, you had a couple casting directors. Um, their names escaped me, but they were great. But just hearing them talk. And one of them mentioned, you know, if you're, chase, if you're coming out to L.A., most folks are from the East Coast, the Midwest, and you're, you know, chasing the dream of being an actor or writer, producer, whatever. Like, if you haven't suffered some sort of like night where you're out on the curb just crying because your stuff, your, you know, what you want isn't happening, then you're not, you haven't really dug all the way in yet, you know. Because um, from what I gather, it, it can be a pretty lonely journey. And from what it sounded like, I think being rejected multiple times is kind of par for course. Um, for folks, you know, in the entertainment industry. So it just goes hand in hand. And even beyond the entertainment industry, you know, most folks, life just throws curveballs at us, you know, and that's just the nature of it, you know. Um, so even like you said, you know, you're a happy guy. And I'm, I'm kind of the same way. But like, you know, I was diagnosed with depression when I was like 19 or 20, you know, and wow. looking back, I probably was depressed before that. So there's times too, where it's like, I get depressed, you know, and it's, so it's like, you know, they, they say, check on your strong friends or, you know, or I never thought they were always happy. They're always the life of the party. You know, that gets lonely sometimes. So it's even those people that you wouldn't expect that are always strong that we need to reach out to and care about. So yeah, being in LA, you know, it's, I um, have been doing the social media for about three and a half years now. And so I was always thinking, we kind of started from the ground zero, but I mean, film, music, entertainment, like there's so many, and there's so many people that we have lost to suicide that have been entertainers, you know, over the years that, and in families that deal with that, you know, and that's the survivors that we talk about that, you know, when somebody dies by suicide or even attempts, you know, it's not just the immediate family, it's friends, it's anybody that's interacted with them that um, is going to be affected by that. And that's long-term stuff we're talking about, right? Like heavy, heavy long-term stuff. So right. yeah, we get a multitude of people reaching out to us. Um, and I'm just grateful that in the last few years, you know, kind of when I've been, I've been a board member for about four or five years that we've really been able to expand our range of people that we've been able to connect with. And obviously the entertainment community is, is just one that's been great to, um, to connect with on, on many levels. Absolutely. Now let's talk about the Out of Darkness walk. Um, uh, forgive me for not knowing the exact dates. And uh, I, I think I went to the one last year and the year before that. So uh, if you can bring us up to speed on uh, what's going on with that. I know we're in the middle of COVID, of course, but if you can talk about what's going on with, the, with that march. Yeah, so our main community events are the Out of the Darkness walks that happen every fall. Um, and we have, being that we have such a large chapter, we host five of them. Um, so that's uh, Santa Monica is our big one at the Santa Monica Pier, Pasadena, um, Ventura County, Santa Barbara, and San Luis Obispo. Obviously, this year we're in the middle of a pandemic, so we can't do any of those in person. And as you have experienced, they're very, very powerful days, powerful events, um, in powerful spaces where so many people come together and are able to cry, able to... Um, mourn or celebrate the people they've lost or their personal struggles and meet new people and um, make connections with people and you know bring hope to others and let other people see that hey there's somebody else like me who struggles uh, daily or somebody that's lost a father lost a brother um, so what we've had to do this year is figure out how we can let people know that we're still here that you know they the resources are still here and that we're still here may, uh, trying to you know prevent suicide and um, just, you know, provide people with resources and, and ways for self-care and how we can all help each other in, in the middle of a pandemic. So it hasn't been easy. So what we're doing is we're basically doing a, a virtual uh, experience on October 24th. And what we're doing is we're um, collaborating with the San Diego Inland Empire, Orange County and Desert Chapter. So it's a collective whole Southern California event. 
um, and it's going to be our virtual on October 24th. And what we've done since then is some of the other, um, like the Ventura County walk, instead of that walk, they did an activity where it was called Hope Rocks. And basically what people did is they painted rocks and, and just messages of hope, you know, suicide prevention number, um, crisis text line, just great little phrases, things, left them in the communities in different areas, just so people will come upon them randomly and just little ways to spread hope. So that was just a cool way that we were trying to um, continue to, to spread hope and, and um, awareness throughout the community one Love way. That. So um, the Pasadena, the walk that you also attended, they just did a, a really, really cool uh, journal, uh, a journaling uh, night and they had a ton of self-care uh, techniques and tips, um, breathing techniques, different journaling um, uh, ways to journal and, um, a lot of different cool little wellness tips that they really put together in a nice um, night of a, a, an hour. So we actually have a YouTube uh, recording of that that we put on our Facebook page. So we're just doing stuff like that. You know, it's tough because for me, the most powerful days are the Santa Monica walk, the Pasadena walk. You, you know, you've been there. You, it's hard to explain because people are like, oh, I don't want to go to a suicide prevention walk. That sounds, you know. Yeah. depressing which <laughs> you know it's sad there's tears that are that are that are left you know that are uh, poured but um you know at the end of the day i think most people leave with hope and they're like wow i didn't think yeah. this could be a hopeful event and i didn't think i could meet great people and, and you know have fun in certain ways um so we're trying our best and that's what we're going to do and um, yeah, so they can still do it. And then the thing is, instead of, you know, the, the three, uh, the five, or three, five K, sorry, three mile walk, you know, anybody can bike three miles or run or hike or, you know, whatever, and then take a picture with their out of the darkness uh, shirt and um, post it on social and then we'll repost it. And so that's kind of how we're, you know, supplementing the walk and not being able to do the actual walk. I love it. I love that you're still doing it despite what's going on uh yeah. globally so that's, that's really cool that's really cool and i mean yeah. like you said you said earlier um uh it's hard to describe the feeling of being there and it's it's a very communal feeling you know you're surrounded by i don't want to say i mean maybe thousands thousands of families just being there together who've, yeah. who've uh experienced the same things so it's a beautiful thing uh, i know people can uh from the outside looking in see it as like a like you said depressing thing but it's really it's a it's a good feeling it's it's really communal communal so good yeah it's a unique community and it's like people, I think when you lose somebody to suicide, especially a family member, a friend, it feels very isolating. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, most people, it's the first time they've encountered suicide or, or somebody, you know, losing their life that they love, you know, um, to suicide. So it's obviously dealing with the, um, the mourning and the trauma and just the shock is tough enough, but then you also just feel isolated. So it's kind of surprising to, to be like, wow, okay, you lost somebody too. And so that, um, you know, we do that bead ceremony where yeah. mm -hmm. we go through each type of loss and everybody takes a, a certain colored bead related to what kind of loss they've had or what kind of connection to suicide prevention they have. And for me, that's the most powerful part of the events because that's when people can look around and see there's hundreds of people that have similar losses in them and that they are not alone. And that's the main goal is for people to realize that, hey, they're not alone. Yeah, and we do have the donation link for anyone who wants to donate to uh, the upcoming of the Darkness uh, virtual walk. Um, we'll link it below. Um, so uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna, I'm gonna venture into a little bit of a touchy touchy territory here and hopefully it don't put yeah. you on the spot. But we mentioned okay. earlier how we are in the middle of a pandemic, a global pandemic. So, uh, you know, uh, there has been a lot of talk uh, since it started about people's mental health because we are very social people. We're a, we're a social species. We like the human interaction of being next to somebody, being in front of somebody. But now because of what we're in, you know, we've, we're talking to people virtually through Zoom or through whatever other platform. So we lack that human interaction. Do you know numbers or just statistics about losses during, uh, during the pandemic? Yeah, well, you know, on top of just the people that suffer from mental you know illness on a daily basis before the pandemic now you add the pandemic on top of it isolation loss of work you know some people losing family members or loved ones and that's just a whole nother layer of grief unknown all that on top so we did um 
we did post a survey that was taking taken um, a couple weeks back. I think it was released in June, but it it was it basically looked at the numbers and it I think it was some don't I'm not exactly sure on the numbers, but it was like up twenty percent. It was significant about the people who had considered suicide since the pandemic. I mean, it's definitely there. Um, and so yeah, so that's what's tough is that one we don't get to all come together and sh- and you know you know like you said be social share stories share hugs talk to each other in person so it's all virtual um but then on top of that you've got this kind of unknown that's just kind of you know hanging in the air of like when is this going to end when can we actually go out see people hang out with people meet new people and in the meantime you're trying to maintain your mental health you know and it's like okay well this is just tricky all the way around. So, you know, one of the things that always kind of stuck with me is that, you know, cause there's so much stigma as you, as you know, yeah. you know, around mental health and the whole word of suicide and, and suicide prevention and everything, and, you know, again, what you're doing using your platform is, is part is taking action and is part of breaking down that stigma stigma because more people know that they can talk about it. So for me, something that always helps is remembering, you know, our mental health, it's just like our physical health. You know, if we go and break our wrist, we can't just walk around and pretend like it didn't happen. You got to get it fixed. You got to get a cast. You got to, you know, so it's the same thing. It's like when we experience traumatic things, our natural, I think, defense is to kind of bury it, not almost sometimes pretend like it didn't happen, but it's still there. It never leaves our body. So, and, and you know, I, I think it's happening, but more people, I think, are less ashamed and, and they're seeing how um, positive or how helpful therapy can be. And I know it was for me when I was 19 or 20. I definitely didn't want to do it, but my mom, like, sent me to a therapist. And just having a, a neutral set of ears to listen and not judge was, like, life-changing. And I, you know, I started seeing my therapist again recently, and it's just been great. And And I went for years without doing it while working for AFSP. So it was kind of not really practicing what I preach to be quite honest, but now I'm doing it and I feel a lot better. She's helping me. We're working on things and it's a process, you know, like I've also learned that it's like, you know, at the end of the day, we're human. We make mistakes. That's all right. We got to be, I think we got to be more forgiving on ourselves too. Cause I think a lot of us have pretty tough self-talk. So that's important. You know, we got to love ourselves and, it's a tricky dance, but you know, it starts with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, once again, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I like, I like posting things that are inspirational for our audience. So um, has anyone told you any uh, inspirational stories uh, in the last few months about how they overcame something? Um, maybe somebody who had, had, uh, I, like I said, I don't want to use the wrong words, who had suicidal thoughts who, you know, was, Hey Matt, you know what? I went through something. I'm out on the on I'm on the other end, much better. Um, have you had Have you heard any of the story? I mean, you don't got to say any specific names, of course. But um, no. is, has anyone approached you about uh, things that are inspirational? Well, yeah, and you know, um, we're a volunteer organization, so we have one staff member for our whole chapter, and everybody else is volunteers. So for me, that's why I continue to volunteer. It's the people that I meet every day, the stories I hear every day that keep me going. Um, that keep me volunteering, keep me involved in the work because they show me how resilient we can be as humans. And it just reminds me that like, wow, I don't think I give myself enough credit for how resilient I can be. So the people that I know, like it reminds me every day of, of the strength they have. And like, if I come across a tough bridge in life, I can, I can get through it. It's going to be tough. It's going to take a lot of work, but um, to give you a specific um, example, there is a board member from the San Diego chapter who um, had suicidal ideation for a long time. I think she had a couple attempts, um, but she yesterday did, it's called the Mount Everest challenge on her bike. So she um, basically, there was a hill like in San Diego that, she was going to ride up like close to 200 times. And at the end of it, she would have climbed the equivalent of Mount Everest. Oh yeah. (laughs) And, um, her story is just phenomenal. Um, and, um, she ended up, I saw tonight, she ended up raising over $20,000, 
um, for AFSP. Yeah, you know, and, and all that money goes directly to um, half to the chapter, half to the national office in New York and, you know, straight back into the programs and the research. And that's another thing about AFSP is that, um, you know, our, um, our uh, I think it's like, it's a high percentage of, of the money and donations we get goes back into programs. You know, there's administrative costs, but it's pretty low and we're, we're rated pretty high on the Navi Navi uh, charity navigator, which rates uh, charity. So that's always good to know because you have to watch out sometimes charities, the money isn't always going there, but right. um, yeah. So, I mean, for her to do that, um, just unreal. I think she started at like three in the morning. I don't think she finished till night, um, but just to see somebody like, use her voice, her experiences of actually being, you know, an actual attempt survivor and using her hurt and turning that into hope for others is really what um, is just amazing. And I've seen that so many times and I know you have too. And I know that's what's just keeps you going. I know you've been technically a lifesaver for people too. And, and the feeling is just, it's it is. mind blowing. It really is. Um, and like I said, I tell everybody this, I'm like, I'm, I feel like I'm just some guy and, but people feel like they can tell me anything. And I, and you know, even if you're watching this right now, I mean, if you need to DM me about anything whatsoever, especially when it comes to mental health or uh, just needing a, a, someone to talk to, I'm all ears. Um, yeah. Matthew, uh, one last thing before we go, like, let's, let's talk about uh, anything uh, coming up with uh, AFSB, um, anything past out of the darkness. Of course, 2021 is not too far in the future, but it's still like, we, we don't know what's going to happen. So uh, anything that is planned right now, um, moving ahead. Um, basically, so we have our big um, SoCal um, Out of the Darkness experience on the 24th. Um, and, you know, everything is kind of up in the air for next year. We still have our LA Marathon planned, which I'm a, the captain of. Um, nice. I've done that the last six years. So but we're not sure about what's going to happen with LA Marathon. But if there are any runners that are watching, um, contact us, let us know, because we do have some spots open. And um, that's always a fun event because running and activity and being active go hand in hand with, yeah. you know, mental wellness and physical wellness. And for me, it's personally been healing and continues to be to this day. So that's like the next big event, really. But I mean, I think in the meantime, um, you know, people can um, – you know, interact with us on our social networks, um, can volunteer with us if they want and, and get involved. Um, it all helps, you know, and just sharing resources. Um, and just, you know, honestly, right now, just, just reaching out and, and, and doing their own self care and, and sharing these resources, I think is, is super important right now because we're all in a state of unknown and to a certain extent. So, you know, as far as events go, we just kind of have this big virtual thing coming up, which is we're super excited about. Um, we'd love for people to join and just to even get a taste because it's crazy because you think, oh, God, a virtual Zoom call, how really, how good can that be? But, you know, we do the bead ceremony virtually and, and you do hear people's stories and um, you do see that, you know, the littlest thing can, can honestly be a light in somebody's day when they're in complete darkness and they're ready to not feel pain anymore. So it's the little things I think, and, and like you're doing, you know, you're spreading the hope and you're spreading the love and it's really making a difference in the world. And it's another thing for people to remember, like it just takes you, you know, it just takes one person to Absolutely. do a little thing to make a big difference. So. And speaking of hope, I see your hat there. Um, can folks, yeah. can folks cop some <laughs> merchandise to, to, you know, throw on social media and, and yeah. share and, yeah, what, what can advocates do right now? Um, I mean, right now we're the last, we're at the tail end of September, uh, but you know, just because September ends and, and Suicide Prevention Awareness Month ends doesn't mean you can't continue to be an advocate. So what can advocates do right now uh, for you folks? Absolutely, it's a great point. And you know, it, it is amazing that we do have a whole month of September, um, you know, designated as Suicide Prevention Month, but really every month should be Suicide Prevention Month. So. That's a great question. You bring up advocacy and the actual advocacy that we do is state and federal. So every year we go to Sacramento, talk to lawmakers and um, promote mental health and, and suicide prevention um, laws we put into effect. And then also in Washington and advocacy actually is one of the quickest and easiest ways to get involved. Um, I'll shoot you a link later, but I, I think AFSP.org um, advocacy, you can see where you can basically just sign up um, to get email alerts. Um, when there's bills going through and it literally all you do is fill in your name 
and like where you live and you send a letter to your local lawmaker. And that's just, it literally takes like 45 seconds or a minute. So that's a quick and easy way for people to get involved. And the more that locally in LA that our lawmakers are hearing about mental health and suicide prevention advocates, you know, the quicker uh, bills are going to get passed through. And there's actually one going through the three digit suicide prevention number 988 that we um, advocated for last year that's been passed, I think, unanimously. It's going to take effect uh, 2021. So it's a uh, direct suicide prevention number. So we're pumped about that. And so advocacy, yeah. And merch, AFSP.org, merch, they can get hats. And that's another great way when you're out in public now um, for just to start a conversation with people. There you go. My man, before we go, uh, what are these socials? We, we mentioned uh, following uh, the socials and, you know, sharing uh, any posts and re uh, resources there. Uh, if you can tell us the, the socials for AFSP. Yeah, so on Instagram, we are AFSP LA underscore Central Coast. And don't forget the uh, underscore folks. Tricky, right? <laughs> and then um, Facebook, we are also, I'm double checking right now, real quick. <laughs> no worries. Hey, all the time in the world. <laughs> uh, let's see, because it's, of course, my internet's going bad. Um, yeah, AFSP. LA Central Coast, just spelled out on Facebook. And then on Twitter, it's AFSP LA Send Coast. Yeah. Bro, it's been such a good time catching yeah. up with you. Please, everyone, forgive my, 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 my COVID <laughs> hair. Uh, I haven't had a haircut in. I've had one haircut <laughs> since COVID started. So please forgive all this. But Matthew, such a great uh, time speaking with you again. Uh, hopefully, we'll yeah. see you soon. And I'll see you on October 24th. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Ramon.